Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Yes, Lord. God is still working miracles. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for the brothers who love the Lord for your singing and for our wonderful choir and these beautiful ladies who just blessed us a moment ago. Thank the drama people. That was a, that was a wonderful drama we had this morning leading into this worship, and we appreciate those people who lead us in these endeavors. Well, we've had a time in the Lord, and it's 926. See you, coach. See how these folk act when the Lord comes by. <laughs> now, please listen to me for a few minutes, and I don't want anybody to leave. I know that you have various responsibilities, but they can wait. They can wait. They can wait. I want to read in your hearing just for a few minutes, Mark 5, 25 through 34. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And when Jesus heard about, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I just touch his clothes I will be healed immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she, she was freed from her suffering and once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him he turned around in the crowd and asked who touched my clothes you see the people crowded against you his disciples answered and yet you can ask who touched me but Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Everybody say, your faith works. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Take the limits off of your faith. Take the limits off of your faith. Just give me about 15, 20 minutes if you don't mind, please. I'll try to bring it through. I hope I can. But if not, just wait a little longer. I told you last week that I am convinced that many people miss out on the blessings of God and on the abundant life that God has for them because they have so many low expectations. They, they missed out on God's bless for their lives, especially in light of the fact that they don't read the word of God. And some of them don't believe the word of God. Something interesting happened last Tuesday night. Please listen to me if you will. Something happened last Tuesday night. We had such a tremendous time. I wish I could tell you what the Lord just spoke to me about. We're going to have a great time. Tuesday night you need to be here. But something happened Tuesday night. After the Bible study, one of our leading members whose son is attending college came to talk to me and stated to me something that riveted 
my heart and said to me how touched her son was on last Sunday. Maybe he had his mind. So he was so touched and moved by the sermon, taking the limits off. She said, I've never seen him so transformed. He, she said, his, your message changed his life and he was going back to school with a new outlook and a new determination. He was going back and he said to her, Mom, I'm going to do better. He told his girlfriend, who was about to change her major of concentration, did you hear what Bishop said? Take the limits off. You can do it. Don't change your major. Change your mind. He said, did you get it? And then he said to his mother, she said to me, Mama, did you see the people? He said, did you see the people? Now, this is a college student. He said, they didn't get it. He's looking around at the people. So I hope you'll get it today. I hope that you'll get it. And I don't want to take, hope it won't take you too long to change your mind about where you are to where you need to be. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that's not personal here. I think that doesn't know it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't have faith for something you don't hear. Four things I highlighted in last week's message. A, you must have faith. Believe in the God who believes in you. B, I highlighted after you have faith, you must make plain because if you don't plan, you'll plan to fail. You need to schedule opportunities. See, I said you got to keep on dreaming. And then D, I said you need to be where the action is. The problem with so many people is that they have so, so low expectations until they miss out on God's best for their lives. Jesus called his disciples around him and wanted them to use their resourcefulness. I told you about the boy the day they were following him and the people were hungry. And he said, is there any food around here? Lord, they said, Lord, nothing around here. The lad, he has two small fish and five barley loaves, but what are they among so many? Jesus took it. He organized the people he prayed over and extended the boy's lunch. All God has to do is to arrange for you to make connections with the right people, with the right resources to get the job done. Don't allow limited resources to knock you out of the game, to sit idly by and to let life pass you by the mistake. You need to do exactly what Isaiah 60 says, arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And if you have limited knowledge, you can overcome your limited knowledge because you, all you have to do is to Google any subject and gain the knowledge you need. I promise you that whatever you don't know, there's someone out there who knows what you need to know and your limitations are just temporary. What are, what are limitations? Bishop Ivy Hilliard states it like this. He says limitations are invisible barriers that intimidate the imagination and paralyze your thinking, causing you to accept your present state as the apex of what is possible. A limitation suggests that to progress beyond your current position is impossible. But I want you to know the devil says that, but I want you to know what the devil says is what people say, but God says the very opposite. With God says, with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. What did I say? With man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. That's what Jesus did. He challenged people. Did you hear what I said? He challenged you. I would be a poor pastor. I know I've gotten on a lot of your nerves over the years, but God put me here to challenge you. Not just to conform. And not just to accept everything. And you don't have to accept everything I say. But at least you ought to think about it. 
Thinking, thinking, thinking provides a resolution and a resolution opens a door of opportunity to you. I'm trying to tell you we have unlimited potentials because we have an unlimited God. No excuse for us to have the same words, the same fear, the same doubt, the same pessimism as believers because we have an unlimited God. Let me go back over a couple of scriptures I read in your hearing on last Sunday, Psalms 35, 27, very significant. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. You know why the Lord came today? Because he was pleased that you had pleasure in him. He was magnified. <laughs> Psalms 81 and 10, open your mouth wide, he says, and I will fill it. Psalms 84, 11, the Lord will not withhold any good things from those who walk uprightly. Third John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul does prosper. But there are a lot of people who are living below, beneath privilege, and who are living below God's desire for their life. And the greatest hindrance to living outside of the will of God and living beneath your privileges and living beneath, beneath the abundance that God wants to, to provide for us is the lack of faith. Listen, I'm not talking about having faith and faith for the sake of just being positive, but having faith in God, having faith in God because of his power, having faith in God because of his ability, having faith in God because of his promises, and having faith in God because he can change and he can alter any circumstance. If there was one thing the Lord Jesus rebuked his disciples about, when they were with him was about the lack of faith. Why? Because he raised a question with them. Here is the question he raised. When I come back, when I come back, will I be able to find faith in the earth? Isn't that amazing? Now, when he comes back, there will be some believers around, but he said, I'm talking about believers. I find faith in earth sounds like a great challenge. It's an immense thing for him, for people, but we need to pull on a God who is pulling for us. And we need to not allow the world to weigh us down and to stagger us as believers. We need to realize that God is on our side and God wants us to trust him even when we can't trace him. One writer Put it like this years ago, many, many years ago, he said this in his prayer, oh, for a faith that will not shrink though oppressed by every foe. God wants us to have a faith that will not waver. God wants us to have a faith that will not quiver. God wants us to have a faith that will not yield. When faced with the severest of trial, it is faith that triggers the release of the divine power. Faith is an inner conviction that God will do what his word says he will do. It is faith that makes us believe that God will always come through. Paul uses this, he talks about it as a story, a paradigm, a picture for us when talking about Abraham, the father of the faithful in Romans chapter four, verse 16 through 21. Let me read it to you. He said, he did not waver at talking about Abraham at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. not only to those who are of the law, talking about the Jews, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. 
He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not against all hope. Abraham and hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be without weakening in his face. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's body was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness of word. Its credit was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for, for us to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. You see, God promised Abraham a son. Abraham was old, <clears throat> you know, he was too old to vote. Not only that, Abraham was too old to be aroused. And listen to me, Abraham didn't allow anything to keep him from believing God. Is there anything to stop you from believing God? I believe it was Creflo Dollar. It came to my mind. I just write and wrote it down. It says, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Everybody said that. Feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. So today I want to challenge you one more time to take the limits off of your faith. You see, possibilities are not defined by what others have done or by what others are doing. No matter who has not achieved greatness, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It doesn't mean that you can't. Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. How many things? How many things? All things are possible to him that believes. Now, in the text, oh my God. Do y'all want me to finish next Sunday? <clears throat> in the text, in the text, is a nameless woman who took the limits off of her faith. First of all, first of all, the text says she was she couldn't stop bleeding. According to the law, that is the law of that day, uh, here it is, it is in Leviticus 15, 25. She had a flow of blood for 12 years. It says she was declared unclean. Now listen to what it says. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days other than at the time of her customary impurity or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity, all the days of unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity purity she shall be unclean now this woman more than likely for 12 years having an issue you know this woman was anemic yes she was and she was subject to other diseases and her body was weak well you may not have had a bleeding like that but have you ever been to a place where you couldn't pass an examination or get a promotion and you've been weakened in your resolve have you given up in your marriage watch this woman who has become weakened because she has been bleeding 12 years secondly listen not only was she weak but she was isolated she was isolated you see in many instances this woman having been in this position having read the book of Leviticus I read in your hearing she was treated like a leper no one could sleep in her bed no one could sit on the chair with her as she previously said she couldn't get a hug because no one would touch her she was isolated and if she weren't married she couldn't get married and if she were married maybe her husband had to be downstairs while she was upstairs because of her dysfunction she had problems the woman was isolated ostracized 
Anybody in here ever feel like that? Have you ever felt exasperated? Do you feel unloved? Do you feel uncared for? Do you feel as if people are treating you indifferently? Listen to me. Do you feel isolated? Have you ever been marginalized? Third thing, please. This disease she had, she was in. Now Luke said, Luke said, no one could heal her. Mark said she had gone to many doctors and instead of getting better, what did he say? She got worse. She's bleeding. Not only is she bleeding. You listening to me? Y'all listening to me? She's bleeding. She's broke. She's bankrupt. In other words, her situation was hopeless. Yeah, but she heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, her faith was activated to the extent that she made up her mind she was going to take the limits off. Hey, everybody in here holler Jesus. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I know y'all tired of me. Well, having heard about Jesus, fourth, she made a faith confession. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I will be made well. In other words, she said, I've heard about Jesus healing these other people, and I'm going to make the same confession for myself. What is a confession? A confession is a statement that we choose to make an agreement to what God's Word said. By an act of my own will, I choose to say what God says. I'm not going to talk right now about my issue. What I'm going to do is talk about the resolution. Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. Why? Because faith feel words. Listen to me. Faith feel words. Build up faith. The word says, by his stripes. I was waiting on you to say it. You preach too. You can preach it better than I can. Boy, I preached this morning, didn't you? By his stripes. The word says he healed all my diseases. So we want to make a faith confession that God is healing all of our sicknesses and all of our diseases. We know what the doctors may say and how they diagnose us, but God's word changes things. It takes, you take the limit off of your faith, off of your faith, you take the limits off of God's power. I'm telling you, God can do anything for anybody. Now, not, not, only, not only did she make a faith confession, but she also made a faith connection. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. She touched his clothes. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. That's what needs to happen right now. That's what needs to happen right now in your mind and in your heart. People touched Jesus that day. I think there were other people who touched him, but this woman in particular needed something because she was at death's door. Where are you? 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 I'm talking to you. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, Jesus said, somebody touched me. I want to know who it was. You know, he said, the virtue came out of him because she made this confession and made this connection. She received a happy moment and a confirmation. You know what Jesus said in verse 34, 34 because of what you've done, he said, your faith. What did he say? He didn't 
didn't say his faith. Your faith has made you whole. You all right? I say, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm talking to you. He didn't say his power, and we know he had power. He said, your faith. Take the limits off your faith. Faith, faith, faith works. I said, faith, 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 faith works. Faith, 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 faith. You don't need a lot. You just need to use what you got. And he's given to every man a measure of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently. There's nothing impossible to him or to her. Amen. Please stand. I said, please stand. Mm -hmm. God can change your life. God can change your world. God can give you a horizon this morning. I'm telling you, God can take you from the dirges of life from the pit and bring you to the palace. Oh, thank you, Father, for deliverance. Now, turn to the neighbor next to you, please, just for a moment. I know you, you feel better now. You're about awake about now. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, how you doing? I need to ask you, are you saved? in Christ Jesus. I need to ask you, when your body transforms, will you spend eternity in heaven? Ask your neighbor and tell him you can today if you receive Jesus as your savior. Now, these ministers are coming for people who wanna receive Christ. If you wanna become a member of this church, of this family of faith. If you want to pray, people to pray for you. These ministers are fired up. They've been praying all week, waiting for an opportunity to lay hands on you. If you need healing in your body, our deliverance this morning, you need to run down here right now. A choir is singing for us, please. Come now, nobody can go for you, but they can come with you. You need to, you know the person who is next to you. Don't let them leave here without Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Enlarge my church.